Good evening, everyone. My name is Jeff on behalf of StriveScan. Certainly welcome to the Archbishop Mitty Virtual College Fair. This evening, we're going to be hearing from six institutions, St. Edwards University, University of California, Santa Cruz, University of Dallas, Portland State, Texas Christian, and Western Oregon University. For all those in attendance, your microphones are muted, your cameras are turned off. You can interact with the representatives in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. You don't have to wait for them to present to ask questions. And if they don't get to the end, don't get to the question before the end of the session, they will get emailed that question and can follow up with you afterwards. Without further ado, I will turn it over to St. Edwards University. Thank you, Jeff. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Patricia Medina. Um, I'm an admissions counselor from St. Edwards University in Austin, Texas. Um, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about St. Edwards. Um, I'm going to be cautious of time. So let's go ahead and get started here. So a little bit about St. Edwards with numbers. Um, we are a little under 3,000 undergrad students. Um, so your average class size being about 18 students with a 15 to one student to faculty ratio. So plenty of opportunities to get those great one-on-one -on -one relationships with your professors. Um, we have 50 areas of study. So lots of options to choose from. Um, you can do mix and match with majors and minors. Um, so really whatever um, you're kind of passionate about, we hope that you kind of continue with majoring. Um, we're a very diverse campus. Uh, we have 44 U.S. states represented, as well as 57 countries. So as you're walking around campus, you're going to hear different languages from Spanish to Arabic um, to French, everything in between. Um, we also are a big study abroad school. We have 30 partner universities around the world where our students um, are able to get tuition and scholarship transferred. So it ends up being a really great deal for our students. Um, plenty of opportunities to get involved. We have 11 NCAA Division II teams, as well as club sports, which is a great way to stay active and compete um, without as much of a time commitment. Um, we are a very green campus, being in Austin as well, a very sustainable city. Um, so we have more trees than students, which is a really fun fact, but um, it also kind of helps seclude the campus from the rest of the city, since we are just three miles from downtown Austin. Um, we are primarily a Catholic university, but you don't have to be Catholic to attend. Um, we welcome all faith traditions and cultures on campus. Um, so mass is offered daily, but not required by any means. Living in Austin is a really great experience for our students um, professionally as well as socially. We are the uh, 10th largest city in America with a population of 1 million. Um, but what's really cool about Austin is that although it's a really big city and it's growing every day, it still has a very small town feel. So as you're attending St. Edwards as a student and you're hanging around in the city and hitting up some local hotspots and events that happen all year round, you'll start to see some familiar faces, which is just a great way to make friends outside of the Hilltop community. Um, we are the live music capital of the world, so we do have events like Austin City Limits um, and South by Southwest, which is a music, film, and interactive festival that happens every spring break. Um, you may have heard of it. Um, Twitter launched during South by Southwest, um, and we've had some great movie premieres during that time as well. So really fun time to be in the city, uh, for sure. We are a liberal arts university, um, so we approach this very practically, though. Um, the best way I would describe it is if you were to come in, say, as a biology major, you're still going to be required to take an art course, a writing course. Um, we want to make sure you get a really holistic education, and we truly believe that those soft skills are just as important as your major specific skills. And it's really cool to see how those different skills can kind of go into your intended major. And um, you can get on a really engaging classroom experience. Um, like I said, student to faculty ratio is 15 to 1. So most of your classes are going to be discussion based, not so much lecture, um, which is just a great way to kind of get to know your peers and your professors. And um, there's a quick look at our most popular and unique majors. So like I said, lots to choose from. Really excited for our new ones, video game development and user design experience. So um, yeah, really, really excited to see what our students do with that with a bunch of companies moving to Austin. We are a Holy Cross institution, so if you're unfamiliar with what that means, basically we just serve and support a cultural and religiously diverse student body. Um, as I said earlier, we want to make sure that everyone feels like they have a spot here on campus. Um, we're part, a part of a bigger community, but we still highlight our difference and get to know each other um, as individuals. Um, we've got a huge commitment to service, um, events throughout the year for our students to kind of give back to the community locally as well as abroad. And then as far as um, 
academics, we believe in not only educating the mind, but also the heart. So in your classes, you're going to have conversations about social justice issues um, and whatever's going on in the world at the time. Uh, we just want to make sure to highlight, um, have those conversations and just make sure you're a better part of the community um, as you leave St. Ed's. Living on campus is a really great experience. We have six first year residence halls with amenities um, and on campus apartments for upperclassmen. Um, so you do get to choose your roommate. If you have someone in mind, um, no worries if not. Residence Life is really good at kind of pairing you with someone who has a similar lifestyle to you. So definitely um, great location, just three miles from the city. So plenty of opportunities to take advantage of. For the most important part is the application. We accept it three ways or four ways. So the General Sanford's app on our website, Common App, um, Apply Texas, um, but also the Coalition app. So whichever way is easiest for you is great for us. As long as we get it, we're super happy. Um, want to encourage you to apply by December 1st. We'll waive the application fee. And when you apply, you do get um, automatic consideration for merit-based scholarship. Um, speaking of merit-based scholarship, don't be afraid of that private school price tag. We're very generous with our scholarship. Um, we award up to $28,000 annually. Um, and so you can see that, that the average freshman received 31,419 in scholarship and aid last year. So um, like I said, don't be afraid, definitely apply and we'll kind of get back to you with whatever merit-based scholarship you get as well as FAFSA. And I'll just end it there. I wanna quickly highlight some of our um, website links there. So you can visit the homepage or come and see us in Austin. We have in-person tours, which are really great. Um, and then if you're ready to apply, there's the link to apply. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Um, I will be your admissions counselor. So I'm always happy to chat with students. And thank you so much for having me again. Thanks, Patricia, appreciate that. Next up, we have University of California, Santa Cruz. Good evening, everyone. My name is Judy Nguyen. Um, I'm a senior evaluator in the Office of Admissions, and that means that I'm not usually a speaker. I spend most of my time uh, behind a desk reading applications and transcripts. Um, so please bear with me. At least this time, I probably won't spit water down my front like I did the last time it was recorded a, a recorded webinar. So, <laughs> all right. So uh, UC Santa Cruz is part of the UC system. We are one of nine undergraduate UCs. And even though we're all different universities, we share the same core mission, which is teaching obviously, but we are also a research institution. Um, and that benefits you as students um, in that research is conducted by all of our professors, but their research team is made up of students such as you. Um, specifically at UC Santa Cruz, the majority of our um, the majority of our student population are all undergraduate students. So students who will be trying to get their first degree um, rather than graduate students. Um, and then the third uh, mission is that we are dedicated to public service. So we are a public university. So everything that is invented by the UC system or any new knowledge that is gained such as um, the Human Genome Project, which was mapped at UC Santa Cruz. So we're very proud of that, um, is, is open. It becomes open knowledge to the public. So it can be used by anybody for the greater good. So here are just a few statistics that I get asked a lot about UC Santa Cruz. So um, just because we are part of a large UC system, we are actually um, the second smallest campus um, population wise. And that was designed on purpose because the creators of UC Santa Cruz wanted it to feel more like a small liberal arts college. So you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one face time with your professors um, and you get a lot of support with your students, uh, your fellow students. Um, so one thing that kind of sets us apart from other universities and other colleges is that Santa Cruz is very um, about all about interdisciplinary study and we're all about collaboration rather than competition. And when you're on our campus, you actually you really do get the feel of it because not only do I work for Santa Cruz, I was actually a banana slug too back in the day. I'm not gonna tell you how long ago because it was a really long time ago. Um, average GPA of student uh, admitted last year was 3.9, but before you freak out, that is just the average. There were many students we admitted below that and many students we admitted above that, and it is weighted. So if you're taking any honors, APs or IB classes, we are weighting your GPA and we're calculated from your 10th and 11th grade only.
So at UC Santa Cruz, we have 69 majors and 40 minors, and we're always adding new things. Um, and they span across five academic divisions. Um, as I said before, we're all about collaboration and interdisciplinary studies. So some of our newer majors are um, born out of that idea, such as um, uh, crit well, no, not that one. <laughs> Critical race and ethnic studies, I was talking to a student earlier, is one of my favorite major majors, and it's fast growing just because um, of it's so relevant with everything going on in the world. But some of our interdisciplinary majors are art, games, and playable media, which was born out of a desire for a, a major that focuses on um, game design, but less on coding and more on the artistic side of it. Um, and then there's also environmental studies, which is the, the OG of interdisciplinary studies that mixes um, public policy and economics and, and earth sciences all together. And once again, our residential college system makes us unique among um, other universities in that this this college system is purely residential. So I know that other universities may have college systems too, but ours has nothing to do with academics. If you think of the university like a city, it's um, each of the colleges is like a little neighborhood within the city. So once you affiliate yourself with a college, you are essentially choosing a home base. So that's where your advisor is gonna live. That's where you are gonna live if you choose to live on campus. And it's the same cohort that you're gonna graduate with. So although you're welcome to go to other neighborhoods either and, and you know go to their dining halls and, and visit, you're always gonna return to your neighborhood at the end of the day. Um, and so it creates sort of a smaller community to help support. And because all of the majors are mixed in living together, um, it's just another way that, you know, we're trying to encourage collaboration. Um, an example was I was a Kresge College student, so I was English uh, language or literature, but my roommate was um, chemistry. So while I was crying over lit theory, he was crying over organic chemistry. So even though like two completely different majors, we still bonded over the same experiences. And when you get to look at problems from different perspectives, from a chemist perspective or from a, a writer's perspective, you see things differently and that's how new information is born. Okay, so minimum requirements for the UC system. It's all the same, but once again, it's just minimum. So if you can do above and beyond, that makes you more competitive. Um, and I'm not gonna cover the, these because they are all available on all of our websites. So these are the criteria we use to read your application. So one thing such as GPA is not gonna make or break your application. So make sure you are well-rounded. PIQs, if I can only offer one thing, Use your own voice. It is not a writing exercise. So it's not an essay, just answer it straightforward and genuinely. And this um, is pretty much it. I'm gonna end it here. Uh, if you would like any more information, please scan the QR code. My email is also on there. I'm the representative for your area and I welcome emails if you have any questions at all. Thank you. Thanks, Judy, appreciate that. Again, a reminder to those in attendance, you can ask questions all along in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Next up, we have the University of Dallas. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cecilia Dukion. I am an admission counselor at the University of Dallas. Um, I'm very happy to speak with you guys today and share a little bit more about uh, our school. Uh, so the University of Dallas, we are a private liberal arts university located um, in the heart of uh, the D a DFW Metroplex, a little bit outside of Dallas proper, so located in this city called Irving. Uh, we do offer a semester study abroad in Rome. Uh, we do have our own campus there. It is called the Due Santi campus. Um, and then we are also um, a Catholic university as well. Uh, so the core curriculum, we do require all of our students to partake in our core curriculum. Um, and do, we do require about 60 credits worth of classes. This is about 19 courses. Um, all students participate regardless of their major, regardless if they're student athlete or not. Um, and it really just creates um, a more cohesive community as well as here as UD because every student is taking them. So you can rely on your peers and not just your professors to help with your courses as well. I mean, it is a great book's focus. So we do read a lot of Plato, Aristotle, um, all the way to Stephen Hawking as well. 
Um, and next thing is our Rome program. So we, it is available to all of our students, regardless of their major. Uh, students can go as early as their sophomore year to study abroad in Rome. Uh, they do have the options of either going to the fall or the spring semester, or even during the summertime. So this is a great way for our student athletes if they don't want to miss either of their semesters for their season um, and just go for a shorter period of time where they can take one or two classes. Um, but if they go during the regular semester, uh, students are able to take five core classes so that uh, we do this so that students can stay on time to graduate within four years. So they're still completing the core curriculum as well as maintaining their major requirements. Uh, while students are studying abroad, we do give them travel opportunities as well. So we take our students on a class trip to Greece for 10 days, and we'll take them all over the country. They'll visit cities like Athens, Marathon, Delphi, a lot of coastal towns as well. And then we'll also take our students on a, uh, on a class trip to Northern Italy, visiting Venice, Florence, and Assisi, and then a Southern Italy trip visiting um, the Amalfi Coast and Pompeii. And every single day, uh, you're, um, there is a planned itinerary. Your professors do go with you. So they do a lecture on site and they rotate doing a lecture on site. Um, and it is a truly wonderful experience um, because you're going with just your classmates and you're all going to these wonderful cities as well and experiencing them. Um, and then we do give our students four long weekends and a 10 day break to travel anywhere they want around Europe and get to do their own traveling as well. Next thing, uh, we are a Catholic university. We do like to call ourselves enthusiastically Catholic, uh, but it is not a requirement in order to be Catholic to attend our school. And we don't require students to go to the chapel once a week or attend um, Sunday service. Um, it is completely up to the students, uh, but about 80% of our students do identify as Catholic. And for the students who are of faith, we do offer daily mass twice a day, um, as well as confessions, daily adoration, as well, um, we do also have a campus ministry where they can connect students with their preferred place of worship or um, through other local organizations if they wanna volunteer within the local community as well. I'm in the DFW Metroplex. Um, it is uh, a great opportunity for our students uh, not to just explore and see what Dallas has to offer. Uh, it's also um, has a lot of uh, job opportunities or internship opportunities. Uh, for some of our majors, we do require an internship and the Dallas area is the perfect opportunity to fulfill their internship requirement for their major as well. And the next thing, the admission process. So we do uh, we do accept the uh, common application, apply Texas, and then we will send out our own institutional application to students called the Odyssey application. All three of them are fine. Neither one of them gives you advantage or disadvantages you. Um, all three of them can, uh, you are eligible to have your $50 application fee waived if you apply by November 1st. We do require a counselor letter of recommendation, an official copy of your high school transcript, and then we are test optional. So you do not need to submit a test score in order to be eligible for a merit-based scholarship or any of our additional scholarships as well. Um, like I said, you are automatically reviewed for a merit-based scholarship when you apply for admission. Um, we do have other scholarships available. So we do have departmental scholarships that students can apply for by December 1st. Uh, we do accept the FAFSA. So we really encourage families to submit the FAFSA by the January 15th priority deadline. Um, and then we also do accept outside scholarships and we do let our students know uh, some outside scholarships that they can apply for with organizations that we have partnerships with and that some of our students have one, um, as well as help them um, and give them the resources to for search engines and whatnot. Um, and all of this can be found on our website as well. Um, and this is just the timeline. Um, so applications typically open up in August, October 1st, the FAFSA is opened. Um, so you can now send in your FAFSA. Uh, November 1st and December 1st, those are some of our early action dates. You, you are not, none of these dates are binding, so you are not bound to attend the University of Dallas if you're admitted by these two dates. Um, and the November 1st is also an important one because that is when you can get your application fee waived. Uh, uh, January 15th, again, the priority financial aid deadline. Uh, March 1st is our regular admission deadline, and then after that we are enrolling admission. 
and then May 1st is our national decision deadline. And then if you have any questions, this is our contact information, um, as well as I'd be more than happy to answer any questions in the chat box. Thank you. Thanks, Cecilia. Next up, we have Portland State. Thank you, Jeff. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Portland State University. Uh, thank you for taking a few minutes away from the Giants and Dodgers game. I don't have a preference on who wins, not that you care in my opinion, but I always like to share it a little bit here. So my name is Dave Kobzina, and I'm the Assistant Director for Transfer Recruitment at Portland State University. <clears throat> Excuse me. I work directly with students across the Bay Area, including at Archbishop Mitty High School. Uh, first and foremost, Portland State, we are Oregon's only urban institution. We're located right in downtown, which really gives you the best of both worlds. You've got the strong academics and, and you know, other um, you know, facilities across the campus that I'm going to talk more about, but at the same time, you have the city in which to explore. Great for outdoors, great for, for nightlife, food, you know, food. We have 700 food carts in the city, so it's really, like I said, the best of both worlds when it comes to that. Now, at the university, we have about 26,000 students all together. Uh, we're the second largest university in Oregon. It's about 21,000 undergraduates. Uh, we are the state's most diverse four-year school, not only in terms of our students' you know, racial and ethnic backgrounds, but also social, religious, political, economic, really everything that you as an individual brings to the table makes us a much more diverse campus as a collective whole. Now, great public transportation. I bring it up because of the, the streetcar that's in the background. Uh, public transit, very similar to San Francisco in that uh, we have the streetcar, as you can see here. Uh, it's like Muni, it runs throughout the city. You also have Max, which is like BART, goes out to the suburbs and the airport. And of course, there's the bus. You're welcome to bring a car. I don't recommend it because a full-time parking permit is around $1,000 per year. So leave it home uh, if you can. Now, on campus, we have more than 200 different clubs and organizations, and I like to say that we're very civic minded, a lot in the way when it comes to um, community service, student government, sustainability initiatives, really trying to make things better for future generations to come. We do guarantee on campus housing with our 10 residence halls. We don't require it, but if you live with, live with us for the first year, we can guarantee up to all four years. We are a Division I school. We're in the Big Sky Conference for everything except softball, which is part of the Pacific Coast Conference. We of course have intramurals, we have club sports, great rec center as well. Uh, so a lot of ways in which you can stay fit uh, while on campus. You may notice the treadmill in the background. Eh, I would say that I'd use it, but not so much. Um, the motto of Portland State University is let knowledge serve the city. I bring this up because in order to graduate, you're required to do an internship or a community-based project. It's all about the hands-on learning. We don't want you to get a piece of paper after four years and say, okay, what do I do with it now? You have to get out there and make those connections. You can see some of the top local employers for our graduates. Uh, Portland is known as a Silicon Forest. It's very high tech. It's a play on words from the Silicon Valley. Uh, Intel is the state's largest private employer with about 10,000 people working there just west of town, a thousand of which are PSU alums. Academically, we have about 200 programs you can choose from, and they're all housed under these different schools and colleges. Uh, some of our bigger programs are going to be in business, engineering, and computer science, along with the health sciences, graphic design, and psychology. We're the only public school in the state to offer both a bachelor's and a master's degree in social work. While we don't require that you have a declared major coming in, that is not mandated until after your sophomore year, we do specify that you need to come in at the very least with an advising pathway. We have seven of these where we group similar majors together. So if you're not exactly sure on what you want to study, but you have a broad idea, that is helpful because it means you're going to have an assigned academic advisor from day one. They will help you figure out the right major if necessary, but also course planning, career planning. So it's more of a holistic approach to your overall education. We also do not have any impacted programs. Your ability to graduate in four years is very strong. Admission requirements, pretty straightforward. We're looking for a 2.5 cumulative unweighted GPA. We mentioned the 2.5 because it had been previously a 3.0. We've lowered it in light of the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, where for a lot of students, especially here in Oregon, their grades have taken a, a you know a little bit of a dip based on you know technology, uh, you know, in, in you know, insecurity at home. Um, not having you know, access to laptops, things of that nature. So we really want students to be given the chance to perform at the college level. Average GPA for us is about a 3.4, so it gives you some perspective as to where our students are at. We have our own application, it takes about 20 minutes to complete. There's also a $60 application fee or a fee waiver. And then we need your official high school transcripts. We are test optional. We will be for years to come. Um, 
we are going to be on the common application at some point soon, hopefully as early as mid-November, uh, but it is something to be aware of uh, moving forward. Now, cost of attendance, we do try to break it down into four different categories, really focusing on the, the two right-hand side for you. Uh, you'll notice that out-of-state tuition, normally about $29,000 per year, but we are part of WUI, the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program, and I'll talk more about that on the next slide. Um, but if you're receiving that, it's about $14,700 per year, bringing your total cost of attendance to around $31,000. And again, part of this is money that's not being paid to the university. We try to incorporate everything you're going to spend your money on for an academic year here. Now, how do you qualify for WUI? You need one of three things, either a 3.0 cumulative unweighted GPA, 1270 SAT, or a 27 composite on the ACT. So long as you have one of those three by the end of senior year, you're going to have WUI for all four years. There are no major restrictions, and we do not cap the number of students who receive it. You will see that the deadline to apply for admission so as to be considered for WUI is on June 15th. Now, if you do not meet the WUI criteria, we also have the out-of-state opportunity scholarship, good for up to $6,000 per year. If you have additional questions after this evening, please feel free to reach out to me by email or by phone. I'll put my contact information into the chat, and I will also be at Archbishop Mitty next Thursday afternoon. Thank you very much, and have a good evening. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate that. Next up, we have Texas Christian. Good evening, everyone. My name is Amanda Johnston, and I'm with Texas Christian University. I'm really excited to tell you a little bit more about TCU, but just so you know, I am your regionally based admission counselor. So the information in the screen um, that is shared with you currently is my contact information, and I would love to connect with you to answer more questions that you may have. One of the things that I like to tell families, particularly families from California, is that students choose TCU because we provide students with that large college campus feel, but that smaller academic environment at a medium-sized university. So what do I mean by that? Well, at TCU, we provide students with a big NCAA Division I athletics. We are in the Big 12 Athletic Conference. Um, students have that national name recognition that comes with a big institution. Um, we have a really strong endowment that has set us up for a great future. And we have 115 majors and areas of study for students to choose from. So there truly is something for everyone at TCU. But with a little over um, 9,400 undergraduates and a little over 10,000 students in total, at TCU we really are able to provide students with that opportunity to have that kind of smaller academic environment, particularly when you divide up all of the students among our 115 programs. And that's where we feel like a smaller institution. It's in that academic experience. At TCU, our average class size is 27 students and we have a 13 to 1 student faculty ratio. It was a business professor who told me this, but I think it's indicative of all of our majors and programs. We do not hire professors who don't want to work with and engage with undergraduates. So you know when you step into TCU's classroom, your professor is not only going to know your name, but your professor is going to be there to want to see you grow um, and build mentorships with you. We did a program the other night for students in California, and one of our professors in the kinesiology program talked about the ways he watched his students grow, not just from first years in the classroom, but all the way to graduation, to professional school, and now they're a member of his peer group in many ways um, in the professional academic community or in the professional community that they chose to um, be a part of. And that's something that makes TCU special is the way our professors really want to see students succeed and see students be successful. And we also know that at TCU, you're going to learn just as much um, outside of the classroom as you're going to learn inside of the classroom. And we think that starts with that first year experience. So we do ask students to live on campus for the first two years. We want students to really be able to kind of integrate with our campus community and find um, ways to be actively involved. And we have over 200 different clubs and organizations for students to join, um, from a thriving Greek life to religious clubs and organizations um, to opportunities for professional clubs and organizations. So students can kind of have that academic experience. And in a traditional year, we have eight, over 800 events in the duration of the school year. So there truly is something for everyone at TCU. And there's always something going on from college game day to a game event um, or an athletic event. And fun fact, we are the only school in the Big 12 Athletic Conference that allows students to go to home, any home athletic event for free 
to um, yoga taking place in the campus commons or a petting zoo taking place in the campus commons, to a performing arts program, to a speaker coming for a specific program. Um, students are always um, finding fun things to do on our campus. And that's why we're ranked third in the nation for student engagement, because there truly is something going on on our campus at all times. Um, I think for me, some of my favorite things on our campus are our student traditions. For example, we have our annual Christmas tree lighting ceremony, um, and um, many students enjoy um, the um, frog walk during game day, where they come out to kind of celebrate TCU and that TCU spirit. Now, TCU was founded by the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, but we're not governed by them. So we don't require students to sign a statement of faith, attend chapel services, um, or really participate in religious life on campus. However, if a student does want to do that, um, we have a number of ways that students can get involved in religious life on TCU's campus through clubs and organizations, including TCU Catholics, which is our largest religious club on campus, um, to services that we offer on campus for many different faiths, religious backgrounds, um, and religious beliefs. We do offer two masses per week on campus. We will ask students to take one religion class as a part of our core requirements, but you as the student get to pick that class. And some popular ones are sports and athletics um, and religion and art um, that looks at the way a religion has impacted art throughout human history. But the TCU experience wouldn't be complete without being in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We are in Fort Worth proper, which is the 13th largest city in the country. And I like to say it does a great job of combining Texas history with modern culture. So yes, you have Billy Bob's, which is the largest honky tonk in the country, and um, you have the stockyards, but you also have a thriving museum district. Um, my favorite is the Kimball Art Museum, but there are so many fun, quirky museums for students to check out. Um, we have a nationally ranked zoo, and Bass Hall brings in amazing operas symphonies, orchestras, and musicals for our community members to enjoy. It also happens to be one of the best cities for job seekers, and um, kind of like my colleague from the University of Dallas mentioned, um, the Dallas-Fort Worth area is an amazing place to find job opportunities and internships, and four out of five TCU students will do an internship while they're at TCU. So how do you make TCU a reality? Well, TCU has um, several different deadlines you can apply under. We have early action, which is a non-binding deadline, Early decision, which is a binding deadline. That's gonna be November 1st. February 1st, we have early decision two, which is a binding deadline, and regular decision, which is a non-binding deadline. TCU reviews students holistically, and it's really important for you to know that at TCU, um, we are going to be test optional for um, seniors this year and juniors next year. Um, sophomores and freshmen, we're still figuring out if we're gonna be holistic beyond that. Now, at TCU, um, we do review students holistically, so we're going to look at everything, but I do have some statistics on the screen. That is the academic unweighted GPA on the screen for you right there. So um, we do factor in rigor, we just separate it from the GPA in the review process. And when you apply for admissions, you apply for our full range of academic merit scholarships. They are also going to be test optional for students. Um, so if you apply to TCU without test scores, it will not negatively impact you in our admissions review or our merit scholarship review. And I encourage all students to apply for need-based financial aid to TCU. Um, we require both the FAFSA for federal need-based financial aid and the CSS profile for institutional need-based financial aid. The priority deadline for that is February 1st, um, and we are need blind, so we don't consider need in our admissions process. So every student should be applying for need-based financial aid. Thank you so much for spending some time with us this evening, and I just like to end my presentations with a nice hearty Go Frogs. So go Frogs, y'all. Thanks so much, Amanda. Next up, uh, we've got Western Oregon University. Hello, everybody. My name is Nolan Arasato. My pronouns are he, she, his, hers, and I am the Hawaii Admissions Counselor here at Western Oregon University. So, let's get started. So, Western Oregon, where is Western Oregon? Well, obviously, we're on the west side of Oregon. Okay, we're located in Monmouth, Oregon, which is roughly about 20 minutes from our state capital, which is Salem. We're maybe about an hour and a half south of Portland, an hour north of Eugene maybe about an hour and a half from the coast and maybe about three hours from Bend, half an hour from Corvallis. So we're pretty central to the northwest of the state. We are a fairly small college town. So if you folks are looking to adventure outside of the town, Weston is a great place to go to. But we are a four year public university. Our undergraduate population is roughly about 4,500 undergraduate. 
graduates. So you're seeing an average class size here of 19. So you're probably seeing very similar class sizes to what you folks are seeing at your high schools currently. Um, of our freshman class, 46% um, will identify themselves as first generation college students. And then of our student body population, 29% of those students will identify themselves as students of color. Um, all students who submit a FAFSA to Western will receive some sort of financial assistance. And just some of our six more popular majors, we have American Sign Language, English Interpreting, Business, Criminal Justice, Education, Exercise Science, and Psychology. So just some of our admissions requirements. Uh, first of all, we are no longer asking for the SAT or ACT score for acceptance or for scholarships. So that's a good thumbs up for a lot of you folks. If you have a 2.75 GPA or above and have a C minus or better in the 15 core classes that we're asking for, congratulations, you folks just got into Western Oregon University, okay? We just need you folks to submit your free application. Our application is free 99 for all students. No waivers needed, no coupon codes. It's free for everybody. So everyone can get a free application with their official transcript sent to our admissions office and your 2.75 GPA or above. You folks are good to go. If you folks fall below that, we're just gonna ask for a personal statement. So for our tuition, we do have WUI tuition. We are part of the WUI tuition program here. So we're going to give you folks roughly half off of the out-of-state tuition. So it's going to be $14,400 going to be for your tuition. We do require all freshmen to live on campus. So you will tack on that extra $10,000 for your first year. So your full first year, you're looking at anywhere between twenty-five dollars to 27000 for your full first year. But if you folks look at the full out-of-state tuition, that's still cheaper. Your full package as a WUI student is still cheaper than your full out-of-state tuition, just that alone. So it's a huge, huge discount. So how does WUI work at Western? Because you have to ask these questions because every school runs it differently. So at our school, how do students receive the WUI tuition? As long as you folks are permanent residents in a WUI state, you folks automatically get the WUI tuition here at Western. So everyone gets it. What majors fall under the WUI tuition program? All of our majors fall under the WUI tuition program, even our pre-professional programs, mainly because we run it as a residence status. And is WUI tuition stackable? The answer is absolutely. You're allowed to stack your WUI tuition with your merit-based scholarships, with your financial aid, anything you have, just throw it all at Western. Because of this, I'm from the state of Hawaii, and because of this, I went to Western for five years for free. I did not pay a penny for my tuition at Western. So some of the scholarships that we have, well, before that, some important information is our deadline. So you have to make sure you submit your FAFSA by February 1st. That's really important. And then you also have to make sure you apply for our scholarships before March 1st, because March 1st is our scholarship deadline. Our three main scholarships, we have our Wu General Scholarship, which that is the one you must turn that in before March 1st. That's the scholarship deadline. We have a presidential scholarship with three different levels. So you can get $1,000, $2,000, or $4,000 per year for four years um, with a certain GPA. So if you have a 3.6 or above, you folks are eligible for our presidential scholarships. And then our Wu Diversity Commitment Scholarship, that's a really big one. That's going to give you $6,000 per year for four years. So that's a $24,000 scholarship. And that is just an essay. How do you define diversity and how do you use your diversity to contribute to your community and help them out? And then we do cap all of our incoming students. They do get a cap of $6,000 for our merit-based scholarships here. But that is not including our WUI tuition and that is not including our financial aid. We're only capping the 6000 with our merit-based scholarships. So some of our more popular majors, I kind of thunderbolted our top six, but I'm going to highlight two of them for you folks today. The first one I'm going to highlight is our education major. Before we were called Western Oregon University, we used to be called Oregon College of Education. So to this day, we still have a great education program. And then um, this program is pretty unique to our school, but we do have a four-year bachelor's degree in American Sign Language. So if anyone is interested in getting a bachelor's in ASL, Western is a great place to come to. And then for the last slide, it's just going to be at our, about our room and board. Like I said, we do require freshmen to live on campus. So that 10800 you will be adding that to your first um, year bill. We do have freshman only options and upperclassmen. And then we also can do co-ed or single gendered halls as well. Um, everyone, though, that lives on campus will get a mini fridge and a microwave in all of their rooms. Everyone gets it, so you don't need to worry about that expense. And once again, my name is Nolan Arasato, your Hawaii Admissions Counselor at Western Oregon University. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation, and I'll put all of my information in the chat for you folks. Mahalo. Thanks, Nolan. Appreciate that.
Well, we've got a couple of minutes here left. Why don't I invite all the representatives back online? And um, I thought I'd ask them a question um, to leave us with this evening. And so what the question is going to be is, what is the one thing you want us to remember about your institution tonight? Um, it can be a fun fact. It can be a funny fact. It can be a serious fact. So just the one thing. So Patricia, I'll let you go first. St. Saint Saint Edwards, what would you like us to remember this evening? Um, I would like y'all to remember um, the, just to highlight the benefits of having the best of both worlds with a small school where you'll get that personal attention from staff and faculty members in such a big and growing city like Austin where there's always something to do and a lot of things to take advantage of. So um, yeah, definitely keep that in mind um, as you're considering your options. Um, and just, I know it's kind of cliche to say, but if you can visit whatever schools you're interested in, um, please do, because when you know, you know. So definitely take advantage of that as well. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Judy, what about uh, UC Santa Cruz? <laughs> um, just, oh, I'm sorry, my mind is just blanking. I don't do well on the spot. Um, but I guess just that it's, it's all about perspective and every person, every applicant is different. And, the re and so when we do read applications, we want to see all facets of you as a student. And that's why we also encourage collaboration again, the one thing, um, because everybody brings something different to the table when we're looking at a problem, so. There you go. Thank you very much. Cecilia, what about University of Dallas? Um, in regards to the application process, now that your admission counselors are there to help you throughout the entire process, um, definitely for me, I, I always try to answer um, emails or questions as fast as I can. So I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Um, and then just a fun fact about University of Dallas, we celebrate Groundhog uh, during our spring semester. It's our biggest event, uh, one of our biggest events during the academic year. Um, a lot of our alumni from all over states uh, fly back into Dallas to celebrate Groundhog on our campus. So it's a very big event for us. Very fun. Dave, what about Portland State? Yeah, so I think one thing to know about PSU is is definitely an institution for somebody who's a little bit more independent minded. They can go with the flow, you know, get involved with the clubs, the sports, all of that but at the same time comfortable enough in their own skin to kind of go do their own thing. If you want to break from school, you've got everything else in the city in which to take advantage of. Very nice, thank you. Texas Christian, Amanda, what do you got for us? Okay, so our mascot is a horned frog. It's the state reptile of Texas, as my fellow Texans here would know. And so we have a little way we like to say hello in Fort Worth. So at home, if you could all do this with me, kind of make a peace sign like you're fighting on, but we fight on harder. So you make that peace sign real angry. And that's how you say go frogs. So next time you're in Fort Worth, be sure to say go frogs to everyone you see. There you go. There you go. Nolan, wrap us up with Western Oregon. Yeah, so the one thing I want you folks to remember, well, two things. The first thing is we have a free application. It's free 99 for everybody. And the second thing is that uh, we do have a movie tuition program. It gives you a great um, discount for your tuition. Uh, we allow all students in Owui State to get Owui tuition. You folks are allowed to stack scholarships with other um, financial aid and scholarships uh, opportunities at Western. And it's covered by all majors. Like I said, huge, huge discount. Thanks so much, Nolan. Well, everybody in attendance, thank you so much for being with us this evening on behalf of the institutions and Strive Scan. We really appreciate your time. You will have a short survey at the end of this. Would appreciate you telling us what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. Uh, there will also be information about the recording if you want to watch this later. And uh, with that said, everybody have a safe night. Good luck in your college choice. Bye, everybody. <laughs>